Hello everybody and uh, welcome to another episode of Conceptual Surgery. Uh, I am Professor Anubhav Vindal and I will be uh, talking about metabolic response in surgical patients today. Now, this is a very important topic uh, as far as your exams is concerned and a poorly understood topic. So, the objectives of uh, today's discussion will be to understand the basic concepts of homeostasis, to understand how the metabolic changes in, uh, occur in surgical patients and what are their mediators, and to understand the factors that affect the metabolic response to surgery. So, basic uh, concepts, we should start with the basic understanding of how our body functions and the concept of a stable internal milieu or internal environment that is milieu interior was given by Claude Bernard many, many uh, years ago. And he said that the stability of this internal milieu is the primary condition which gives an organism the freedom for independent existence. That means until and unless an organism is able to maintain its internal environment as stable, that, an, that organism will not be capable of internal uh, independent existence. Another uh, related uh, co concept uh, was given by Walter Cannon who defined homeostasis as a coordinated physiological process which maintains the steady state of an organism. That is, in order for an organism to maintain the stability of the internal environment, all the processes which are occurring within the organism is the sum total of the con concept of homeostasis. And lastly, John Hunter said that the injury uh, in its own, that is, when we talk about injury, so by injury we mean not only injury, but surgery is also a form of injury. So the injury has in itself a tendency to produce both the disposition as well as the means for cure. So what, what did he mean by that? He meant that whenever there is any insult to this homeostatic mechanism of the body, it not only produces all the, the signs and symptoms of injury, but also starts a cascade which sets the body, uh, body's mechanisms rolling, which will ultimately uh, cause the healing of this injury or the insult. So, the traditional versus modern concept of homeostasis. So, the traditional concepts of homeostasis said that uh, homeostasis is the foundation of normal physiology, but there are several situations that we see in normal day-to-day -day surgical practice uh, where we see that body is unable to uh, restore the mechanisms or uh, the, the, the metabolism or the physiology back to normal. A common example is a patient who has sustained uh, a, a severe trauma and all the homeostasis in the body has gone haywire and until and unless there is some intervention in some form, be it uh, intensive care intervention or be it surgical intervention, body will not be able to get itself back to normal. So, the traditional concept of homeostasis wherein the body in itself was capable to bring the physiology back to normal does not hold true in many of the modern surgical concepts. So, uh, the, the perioperative care that is normally seen uh, in, the, in, in modern day surgical practice basically helps to preserve homeostasis following the elective surgery which ensures that the post-operative recovery of the patient is uneventful. And to this effect, resuscitation, surgical in intervention and like I said, intensive care monitoring that is critical care can return the severely injured patient to a situation in which body's own mechanisms can take over and restore the physiology back to normal. So, <clears throat> the closed loop uh, is the traditional concept wherein there is an insult there is homeostasis which will then bring back, uh, so there is an insult here, there is a cascade which rolls, there is homeostasis and it comes back to normal. So this is a traditional concept. The modern concept is there is an insult which is severe enough which will despite body's best ability will not be able to restore it back to normal until and unless there is uh, intervention of some form in the form of surgical intervention or critical care intervention which will help to close this loop. 
So this line which I have drawn in red is the modern concept wherein the, the modern surgery, the critical care and the resuscitation help to bridge the gap and close the loop which was open. Another concept that we must need to understand here is that the response to body, uh, response of the body to any injury or any insult. So whenever I am talking about injury, surgery is also a form of injury. So the body's response to any form of insult or injury is dependent on the severity of the injury. So you can see here, there are two graphs. The upper graph says major trauma, the lower one says minor trauma. So there are two things that you need to observe here. It is not only the peak which is different, but it is also the timeline which is different. In major trauma, not only does uh, the, the stress or the metabolic rate achieve a higher peak compared to that in minor trauma, but also the graph, the area under the curve is much wider in major trauma. That means body takes that much longer time to come back to normal state after a major trauma than what it takes after a minor trauma. So the, this metabolic response starts at the time whenever there is an insult to the body and it evolves with time. When, what do we mean that it evolves with, with time is that initially there may be some mediators which start when, uh, which, uh, uh, which the body produces with the start of this response. But it is not that the same mediators will continue for the whole duration of this response. So the first stage may have some, some mediators which may get, uh, give uh, weight or give path to the se 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 uh, different set of mediators as the response evolves with time. So the first state, which is the pro-inflammatory state, which is immediately after the insult has happened, is mediated by the innate system, that is the body's inherent system, which is uh, mediated by the complement pathway. After that, uh, once the innate system has had its functions done, it, give, it uh, gives the path over to the adaptive system or the adaptive Im immune response, which as we all know is mediated by the P, uh, B and the T cells. And then there is something which is known as compensatory anti-inflammatory response syndrome. This, uh, this mechanism ensures that the inflammatory pathway does not go out of control and uh, the, the CARS or the compensatory anti-inflammatory response syndrome helps to bring the balance between the pro-inflammatory and the anti-inflammatory mediators. And that is when the plateau and the downslope of the response occurs. Obviously, if there are any complications in the form of infection, this pro-inflammatory state will uh, continue for a longer time and the anti-inflammatory response syndrome, uh, which in a way will decrease the immunity of the organism, may also make the organism susceptible to infective complications in the post-operative period. So this is a diagram which is basically a summation of all that happens after a person uh, sustains an injury. So the start is here when injury happens and there is an afferent nociceptive pathway which senses that there is an injury in the form of let us assume that there has been a surgery. So the free nerve endings of the body will tell the spinal cord and the brain that an injury or an insult has happened. The brain sends a stimulus to the hypothalamus and pituitary. So hypothalamus secretes the corticotropin releasing factor, which then signals the pituitary to start the production of ACTH and increase production of growth hormone. Now both of these will help to channel, mobilize the fuel which is responsible for the, for the reparative process. So the, the, the signal is sent out to the adipocytes, the fat cells to increase lipolysis. Also, ACTH acts on the adrenal gland to increase the secretion of cortisol, which is the main uh, glucocorticoid. And basically, it helps in breakdown of the glycogen, which is stored in the liver. Also, the spinal cord through which all this, the, the sympathetic nervous system uh, emerges out directly uh, sensitizes the adrenal gland for increased production of catecholamines. The sympathetic nervous system will also act on the pancreas to increase the production of the glucagon, 
which is uh, as you all know is counter regulatory hormone to insulin and this glucagon acts just the opposite of insulin which is a uh, uh, anabolic hormone so glucagon will help uh, mobilize further fuel for the reparative process by acting on the skeletal muscle breaking down of protein and also acting on this, the liver to increase the production of acute phase proteins in addition to this like i said the initial response is uh, is the is uh, uh, manifested in the form of the activation of the innate immune system which then act to produce increased production of IL-1, tumor necrosis vector alpha, IL-6 and IL-8. Out of these, IL-6 and IL-8 will act on hypothalamus and give rise to pyrexia. Decrease in insulin, decrease in insulin-like growth factor, decrease in testosterone and decrease in T3, basically the anabolic hormones along with increase in the catabolic hormones will give rise to a state which is a hypermetabolic state and a phenomena which is a, which is basically acting to channelize the fuel to the area where rep, uh, the, the insult has happened and the body needs to channel its resources to. This in, innate immune response after some time like we discussed will pave the path over and give give way to the adaptive immune response which is mediated by the T cells and the B cells.